Don in London, hello, it's December 7th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, could have been anything. My behaviour could also be addictive, workaholic, relationships, collecting, fear. I think fear was the primary addiction somewhere in all of this. Fear of everything in the end. But these days I try to live one day at a time with less fear, less brave facing, less ego, less pondering on extremes of having something or not having something. Somewhere in the middle there is balance and I used to swing by that very often in my drinking days or in my days where I was working as hard as possible to make a successful career and then another one and another one. And then I fell off my perch or my mountain top all the way down into the valley and then into a deep, deep pit where I had a nervous breakdown and uh, I didn't realise how common that was until I had one and then I realised that I too was human but at the same time I got myself into a place of dependency on alcohol and what that did for me, well for a year I stopped just simply because I felt it was the right thing to do and that really brought on the depression because there was nothing in between me and my depression. In fact, they're one in the same. I was depressed clinically, and no amount of chemistry or chemicals seemed to do anything to alleviate the anxiety state and what followed. So, time was the only measure of any sort of improvement. But the problem was, as time gave me some improvement to find anger and ragefulness, drink came back into the scene. And it's insidious because it's not the first, well it is the first drink that does the damage but we feel alright at the first drink it's after a few that we suddenly realise was this a good idea and why is it taking so long to work and why do I have to keep on taking more to get the effect and the impatience which goes with that and eventually in uh, this millennia I found myself completely addicted and unable to stop in any shape or form and I had a moment of clarity where for many months I just didn't want to wake up because it meant I had to go back to drinking again and thought and felt I couldn't do it on my own no matter what and I tried everything self-will ran riot and then gave up and I had to go and ask myself that question or ask myself the question how am I going to stop this could it get any worse and funnily enough in sobriety I had a few more rock bottoms to go but that admission I cannot do it on my own was the starting point of a journey into sobriety which involved emotional, spiritual and physical well-being for me and what helps me more than anything family, community, fellowship and I need to put sobriety first and what helps me put sobriety first is the fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous so, less brave facing today, less, less utilising my ego, less guilt, less shame, freedom on a daily basis to have a bit of courage, faith and confidence in what might happen next. So, what are my choices today? As long as I keep my eyes and my senses open to what is going on around me, my choices are pretty much what they can be with what is in front of me, rather than a wishfulness or a fantasy. So I'm back in reality, hopefully, just for now and just for today. And that Fellowship of AA is helping me do that because I go here, unique, authentic people share their experience, strength and hope on a daily basis about what is making life work and what is making life difficult or not work. And most often, the person who is making life difficult or not, making it not work is the person who resides in this body, me, so what does AA do for me? Well here comes the statement of intent or the AA preamble and then I'll share some of the literature readings. AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy. 
neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And when I went out to the meeting last night, I was thinking to myself when I was going along on my bicycle down to uh, Flood Street, which is the meeting I go to on Sunday night called Lest We Forget. And I was thinking, Lest We Forget, I wonder if I can recite the AA statement of intent on my way there in my head or speak it out loud because nobody could hear me. And uh, first attempt, I made a couple of errors and then I got it right. And I bounced into the meeting and said to people, I can recite the AA preamble or statement of intent. They said, go on then. And I couldn't because I forget and can forget very easily what is keeping me sober. So although it was nice to remember it on the way there, I know that on any given day I, for I can forget the tools of the program. So I go to meetings to refresh my memory on a daily basis. It's like a computer. If you don't sort out and clean up its disk or defragment it, it gets blocked up and cannot operate. And that's me. So, you know, humankind need daily meditations and reflections to keep on a steady path of progress. It's not going to make me bigger or a giant spiritually, but it will make me able to understand my spiritual moment of now, which is, which is truth for me. And life can carry on. So there you go. <laughs> daily readings, daily reflections, December is all about the 12th step of the 12th step program. And the 12 steps of AA are an action program, working every day as we learn them and live them. And step 12 is all about sharing the message and improving, not improving, but living a spiritual condition, which is to meet the truth of now as it is, happy or sad. So spiritual doesn't mean that we're going to have nirvana or some sort of higher feeling of superiority in our outlook. It just means we see the truth of now. So De December the 7th, true ambition. True ambition is not what we thought it was. True ambition is the deep desire to live usefully and walk humbly under the grace of God. God is truth, God is love, and God works through people for me. During my drink drinking years, my one and only concern was to have my fellow man think highly of me. My ambition in everything I did was to have the power to be at the top. My inner self kept telling me something else, but I couldn't accept it. I didn't even allow myself to realize that I wore a mask continually. That's it, putting on a brave face. Finally, when the mask came off and I cried out to the only God I could conceive, at the time, the fellowship of AA, my group and the Twelve Steps were there. I learned how to change resentments into acceptance, fear into hope and anger into love. I have learned also, through loving without undue expectations, through sharing my concerns and caring for my fellow man, that each day can be joyous and fruitful, or sad and horrible. I begin and end my day with thanks to God, or truth, good conscience, love, who has so generously shed his grace on me. <coughs> and the gift in that, excuse me, is to know where I am. And, you know, if I have any resentments going on, and I nearly got one against myself last night, because uh, the, per oh. the person I met on the way is going to be a dad. And I blurted out, are you a dad yet? And I just thought, you know, that is so silly because I don't know how things are and I haven't seen this person for a few weeks and God knows what might have happened. So, you know, my enthusiasm for uh, the expectations which are coming could have been disastrous. I didn't actually just say, how are you? And they could have said, yeah, everything's fine and I'm going to be a, d a dad in this amount of time. Anyway, that's the gift. I realised and I apologised, you know, I said I'm really sorry. It could have been a very difficult conversation if things weren't right. And I hadn't asked you how you were first. Anyway, we learned, don't we? So uh, I undid my resentfulness against myself as quickly as I could and uh, just owned up. Not an, not an appropriate way to approach it, even though it was meant in good, in good stead. So, acceptance of me today, as I am. And the serenity prayer because I'm a, a learner making progress and never going to be perfect. The serenity prayer to acceptance, to, to the God of your understanding or higher power, or just good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is always for me, just for today. <laughs>